Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Pound Russell, the mighty mix spammer and what on earth am I doing here? I'm supposed to be asleep. No, really, today is the day that I leave to Korea or rather it is tomorrow, but I should be already asleep because it is currently, what is it, uh, whatever. I was supposed to be asleep at 9 p.m. It's going to be probably 11 p.m. at the very least when I actually go to sleep, which makes me slightly annoyed, but... Well, I just love you so much that I'm willing to make this video for you regardless. Not really, it's just my mom is really loud so I cannot sleep anyway. So I might as well make this video cast, right? So anyway, as you can see, the amoebas decided to attack me and this is a perfect way for me to get kinda warm up, wake up a little bit. Even though I actually don't want to be too overly hyperactive because then I will have problems sleeping, but then again... I would have problems regardless because let's face it, I'm about to leave to Korea. I will see Sonia Shide in person from like a couple of meters away and like a hundred meters away, like it was in Paris. So <laughs> I have I cannot wait. So anyway, the enemy is using dreadnoughts, focus on missiles, and the best counter to that will be uh adopt a strategy because I want to do as much damage as possible. Those are old magnetics, they are still abiding the RPG rules. You know, role-playing rules, which means that they are not the most effective way of destroying and dispatching the enemy ships, and they are most likely going to be destroyed in the process. They, of course, manage to take down a defender, but they will not be able to do much else. I'm afraid, especially after this, after the salvo of rockets. No, they will not. I mean, it does look pretty. I mean, the beams, the kinetics, the missiles, the everything. But let's face it, they are not nearly enough to, pa to penetrate through. Dreadnought's defenses, and I think this is slightly too loud, so I'm gonna lower the game volume by tiny amount. And we can see some more of the Dreadnoughts being fired upon, and the uselessness of my being sadly. They are nowhere near strong enough to actually deal any damage to those Dreadnoughts, because they just have so much shielding, and flag, and defect, and my ships have none of this. So they were, so they were absolutely devastated in this assault. Which is kind of sad, what I should have done was retreat in the long range phase, uh, preferably using offensive retreat, but sadly, what I did not realize is that I'll not even be able to make a lack of difference and I'll die regardless. Also, it's kind of annoying, I just noticed that the guy on Mars, who, you know, just dispatched my fleet, is now heading in somewhere like Ruins or Observer, which is annoying, I need a big fleet to stop him. And do you know what I did with my biggest fleet? Yeah, that's over it, that's it. It's right over here, you can see it right now, it is halfway through into Kratz. I mean, I will stop at Tortuga no down because there are pirates heading in and I need to dispatch them. And I must as well do this after I set the calls, but it is still mildly annoying. So yes, I did finish a turn off camera as I usually do. And I want to see my report on what happened. Dasalos colonized an Arctic, very, very nice. I uh, will probably use it to some kind of extent, I'm not sh still sure to what extent exactly, but let's pretend that it was a good thing indeed. Contradict colonized a lava planet, which is very nice. Contradict, man, it's a very, very promising system. It's, it has a decent amount of industry considering this fact that it's current, currently on strike. How is it even possible, actually? Expansion of a population, planets. Well, I guess mineral pool plus lavas combination is a pretty bad combination, so I can understand why the system doesn't like me, sadly, because I could use its, you know, help. And apparently I have no access to antimatter, how so? Oh, because the only antimatter I control is on I'm hot, but unfortunately, the amoebas, those blasted savages, decided to attack the system. Now, let's have a quick look at the military strength. Two and a half thousand, a little bit more than that. Six military strength, which probably means either three battleships or more likely a dreadnought at a battleship. Of course, those could be small ships, but I know AI a little bit. I'm fairly sure that this is either a dreadnought and a battleship, three battleships, or maybe even cruisers, but I highly doubt that. So let's think how many ships can I construct on the system within a single turn? Well, looking at this magnetic, I can make exactly. One? Yeah, I'll just barely not have enough industry to create another one by, via the industry itself, which is rather annoying, but I guess I'll have to live with it, sadly. 
Oh well, I'll think of something uh, in a moment. However, firstly, there are more important matters to attend to, and one of those is this. As you can see, I fulfilled my promise, and this huge planet is now a lava planet. I am a cruel crew man that turns deserts into lavas because, hey, I'm so hot. Not really, but you know what I mean. I also may change the exploitation of every single one of, pla of the planets on Matrix into 3D replication plants, and now this system is an industrial powerhouse. As you can clearly see, I currently have a 2134 industry stacked up, which used to be above my maximum, in fact. Now my maximum is 3200. Let me say that again. 3221 industry. That's a lot of industry, even for Amoeba standards. And they have a lot of food production. So, I feel rather gorgeous, if I may say so myself. And you know what? I do need those ships because the Amoebas are going to assault. But I do have another turn, I believe, so I can wait with that. I'm going to stack a little bit more on my industry because I like doing so. And it is useful regardless. Now, there's another problem. I do need a lot of dust. Why? Because I need to make ships on both Rendezvous and I'm Hot. Those systems are both crucial to my plans and I cannot let the AI take them over. Sadly, I do not see any way for me to gather enough dust since I am losing a lot of it every turn and I am not gaining it at a fast enough rate. Now, I can make some of my systems turn industry into dust but even if I do that, which I don't really want to, mind you, then still I will not be producing enough dust. Actually, I will be gaining dust rather than losing, so it's not that bad. Not bad indeed. Alright, Rendezvous, how many ships can you create for me? Actually, quite a little bit more than the other systems, so let's see, how many ships do I need? Three. Alright, can I create three out of industry alone? I should have no problems with that. That's very nice. I will not need to spend dust to create them. However, this system, not so much. I do need dust to make anything on it. Alright, and I should do so now while its approval is at happy, because if I stop for too long, it will turn from an outpost into a full-fledged colony, and then it will have this overpopulation disapproval, which is overexpansion of disapproval. I got the two things mixed up, I'm sorry. Which will probably make the system unhappy, so I should, by all means, make all the ships I can in this particular turn. So how much does it cost to actually make a single ship? Not that much, so if I make a bunch of those... Right, this will give me 5 Magnetic 12s, which are extraordinarily powerful, and they should... Huh, they actually might have some problems dispatching this field, but I have no more dust anyway, so if they are not enough, then they'll now be in deep trouble. But at the very least, I'll weaken the enemy's invasion potential, no matter what happens, because still, those are not only dreadnoughts, I can see that there's at least one weaker ship. And if, with the enemy having a weaker invasion pad, I'll have enough time to actually move a stronger fleet to the system, or maybe build an entirely different fleet on Contradict, which is getting ready to actually start pumping out fleets on its own, which will be awesome. Only problem is, it has barely any fits production because, you know, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't like me a lot. Which is understandable, but still rather sad. Alrighty then, after solar mining and uh, whatever it is, infinite variable computing, what do I want? Well, technically speaking, I want better guns. I do need guns, I very much so need hypermagnetic shielding. I do not really care about plasma deflection, especially since access to, high, uh, to antimatter is. It is difficult to acquire for me in my current position. It will be fixed in the future, but you know what I mean. I also do really want to get Extreme Fusion because this will be invaluable when spamming destroys, but right now I do not even have accelerated magnetics, so you know, I'm still quite far away from getting condensed plasma and I don't think I want to, I want to rush it. I've been rushing things for the past, I have no idea how many turns I need to do a little bit of a more stable approach. Same goes for directed AI computing, even though I want desperately to get it now, I do have to wait. Because it just requires too much science and I simply cannot afford this kind of expense. Now, unlimited information highways is something I am kind of considering but I don't think it is actually worth its cost, not in 
dust, but in science, right? Because it costs 2,000 science to get it. Actually, that's not a lot, but as you can see, it would still take me three tens, as I'm only producing 981 science per ten. If I'm producing a thousand or more, I would consider getting into species. I'm sorry. HR, but at the moment, I don't think this will be indeed the case. So instead, what I want to go for is either advanced warp uh, fields, which will make my ships insanely fast, which is incredibly crucial to my plans. As you might imagine, good logistics is a key to victory in almost any scenario imaginable. And, you know, my automated affinity gives me this access to this technology very, very early on. So I do need to take uh, good use of it. Same applies to low temp hydration, although while hydro sequencing is extremely powerful in Terran, you know the one kind of a planet that I do not have? It's Terran. So I wouldn't be really able to use my most powerful improvements at this point in time anyway, so I would have to wait. So I don't think I'll be rushing this anytime soon. Soil modification, on the other hand, is kind of tempting just because of extreme anomaly reduction. I do have those two poor souls on my contradiction system, and I'm pretty sure I also have EM radiation somewhere and maybe something else that I completely forgot. But even if, if it was just for getting, in, you know, even if I were to just get this upgrade to reduce the anomaly on my contradiction system, this could possibly be enough to justify getting it, because it is an important system, as you can see, it is getting close to being maxed out in population already, and it's just a newly conquered system, or a colonized system. It has an amazing both industry and science production, and I do want it to be a little bit more happy. And while infinite... Uh, no, how is it called? Unlimited information, however, would help it be happy. What would help even more is this, anomaly reduction. So I think I will go for that. I do not really need or care about desert terraformation, but it will be useless nevertheless. Yeah, I don't really care about it. But it will give me to access to our transformation, which I also will not care about it, because I will already have Terran Terraformation. Yeah, Cerebrification is really not something you wanna go for as automatons, but in my case, I think I'm justified. I need this pulsar removed more than anything else, and, and that's it. I have nothing else to say about it. So anyway, my production is queued up. I believe there is little else I can do. This fleet needs to stay here on Matrix. It is... Inv incredibly important that I keep control over Megatrix at all time, and this fleet will not die to just any random invader. It will stand st still, it will stand tall, and it will not let anyone invade Matrix. So I need it to stay there, no matter what happens. This fleet, on the other hand, I would love it to invade something, and in fact, it can. Oh yeah, baby, I cannot wait. Tortuga, my dear sir, does have a lot of industry, but it da I do need it to create me some more dust, otherwise I will go bankrupt. So I'm not gonna touch it at all. Alright, I am kinda considering getting six old satellites on Tortuga, but frankly it will not be worth it. Even if I do fulfill my dream and keep those two planets occupied, I mean, you know, controlled by pirates, or at least one of them, then still, uh, you know, it's not like a necessity or anything. Anyway, Hishu has been informed of your overwhelming ascension. They cannot help but assume that they will be definitely outstripped. And this thought does not make them happy. They are now ne neutral. Sad. And also, I can see that apparently, <laughs> yeah, as I thought, the enemy really, really, really does want to go come into Matrix and do some stuff with it. Even this fleet is actually heading into Matrix, not into Observer as I originally thought, which is an interesting thought indeed. <coughs> Sorry. I coughed, in case you haven't noticed. So it's sad that he should like me less, but frankly, it also does not matter at all. Soon we'll have a common enemy, because now they have a close border to the amoeba, and they will not like amoeba as a direct result of that. Those are Sheridan, I do not care about them. Righty, right, righty. I'm trying to see if there's anything else important. Doesn't look like a Temple of Holy Helix on Dust Silos. Now, Dust Silos are pretty decent in terms of science production, are they not? Uh, not really. I mean, they have an Arctic. Arctics are really good for science, but that's about it. I mean, Tundras on their own have a little bit of science. I mean, they have quite a lot, but those are only two planets that actually generate a decent amount of science. If I go for science exploration, I'll have even more, but still, I'm not overly happy, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not unhappy though, because I could just get an empty moon like I usually do, so, you know, I'm not gonna complain or anything. This would be kinda rude, wouldn't it? 
anyway, Lahad is almost captured by me, but the Amoebas inv decided to declare a battle on me, and they'll most likely chase me away or just kill my ships. I'm okay with that, but first of all, what I want to do is engage in this battle because it seems like something far more interesting, and as expected, a single Dreadnought and a single Battleship. I am so smart. I'm not. I just let. I just gained the ability to learn, and I learned the AI patterns, and it always follows the same or at least similar patterns. So you know how it goes. Anyway, the enemy probably has missiles. Actually, hold on a second. I don't care about that. I want to deal as much damage as I can. Now the enemy does have some shielding, so it will not be a piece of cake. But it doesn't look like they really focus on the shielding. The dreadnought has. Mostly focus on flak and uh, missile, and you know what, hard girls, I don't care about the enemy missiles, they will destroy only two of my destroyers, and I would definitely destroy at least the backer, hopefully Proteus as well, but even if I will not be able to do so, I will still deal significant damage and destroy it in the later turn. At the later turn, and why do those magnetics use missiles? I thought I switched to lasers, beams. I guess they were less effective. That No, 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 I forgot! To Ooh, that was very close. I almost didn't click on another strategy. But anyway, things are doing very poorly as the enemy is taking like no damage and my ships are too dumb to attack the weaker ship first. So I just wasted five ships fighting two easily killable enemies, but in the end I will not kill any of them. I'll just deal some damage to the dreadnought, but it will not lower its invasion power. And look at that, I so hate my captains, I wanted to die, I wanted to be gutted alive and watch their innards spill on the ground and rot as they die. Which would require them to die rather slowly, I admit, but still, I think you understand what I'm trying to say. I am rather displeased with my captain's performance. I am indeed rather displeased. Actually, I do have more powerful beams, why am I really, really using the missiles? I need to look again at my ship's designs because I'm not sure if I made a mistake or if it was done on purpose. It is very possible that it was indeed done on purpose, but come on, look at how little damage I dealt. <sighs> I'm very annoyed by that, especially since I now have no dust and I will lose I'm hot and I am angry because of this. I really, really am. So. Let's have a quick look. First of all, Magnetics, they use beams, as uh, they should, but those Dreadnoughts, they are using missiles. Oh yes, because I wanted them to be cheap. It is of industry, and they are cheap, but, you know, <clears throat> yeah, I'm still rather displeased. Because those rockets were not nearly enough, and they still will not be. So should I stay focus on rockets or switch to beams? For now I was focused on rockets because apparently my beam weapons are not as advanced as I had hoped. No indeed, they have barely reached the level of fusion batteries. But, oh man, I wanna have more science, more knowledge and more power to destroy my enemies, but sadly doesn't look like this will be the case. Now this enemy ship, it has a lot of defenses, my magnetics will not be able to do anything to it with their missiles. I said, don't, uh, I do not think this will be the case. I can try my best, and you know what? I will. Reason why? Those sh two ships of mine, they will die. They might destroy the enemy. They're not. I don't think so. It would be great if they did, but they will not. But however, even losing them is good for me because I will not have to spend dust maintaining those two magnetics, which are fairly odd anyway. So I believe it is. Why did I go for manual? I wanted to out of this. I don't have enough time to go into manual for such petty battles. Oh well, I'll just drink some water then. Excuse me for a second. In case you're wondering, I'm drinking water because I did recently brush my teeth and I do not want to get them, uh, you know, contaminated by juice. I know it sounds ridiculous and silly, but I would have to, you know, brush them again because otherwise I would not feel comfortable and this would drive me crazy. Because I'm a lazy guy. Crazy, lazy, and it drives and no, no, just no. 
anyway, as you can see, I actually was able to do quite a decent amount of damage to this, did I not? But it will not fall this time, and uh, there's no way it will. It has too much HP, and missiles are less effective in the medium range uh, anyway. I, on the other hand, will die no matter what, because I simply have no defense at all against those missiles. So yeah, I fall down, the enemy takes actually no damage, and in fact heals some damage afterwards, because he's got the healing module, no doubt. Which makes me annoyed, but hey, you know, it, it happens. Yeah. Don't worry, I will not sing today. First of all, I don't have the energy for it. Secondly, I also know that it would hurt your ears and whatnot. And I am almost at Tortuga, but not quite, which is always annoying, but I guess it happens. And Yuri Seiko dead invade Matrix, or at least go come close to it. I do want to go into manual battle this time around because I want to watch my enemy die for a change. You know, you know, it doesn't happen as often as I would like it to, so whenever possible, I like to actually make it happen. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Now the enemy is using missiles, so I will go for barrier first and then repair any damage. And in fact, you know what? I believe I will be able to carve through their defenses. They do have some shooting, but it is something they'll focus on least, and they are indeed retreating. So I could have went for EMP to deal some extra damage, but you know it doesn't really matter since the enemy is running away anyway. Though I could have at least damaged those ships a little bit more, now they are barely taking anything. But you know what, what then again, it's not the purpose of the electrics. Electrics are here to stand tall and they are doing so way better than the thermos did. Unlike thermos, electrics are actually are focused on defending against a single type of weapon and because of that they can focus on it rather well and they can be, you know, Pretty much indestructible to said type of weapon, which is good by all means. This actually does allow me to maintain control of the space out above Matrix. Anyway, my scout just discovered what used to be the Kraven's homeworld, no doubt, because as you can see, it is depleted, and I just, you know, it kind of makes sense. I mean, there is a Kraven ship nearby, and it is a, it used to be a home system, so it kind of makes sense. Alright, it's good to know that the credits used to be here and they are probably going to be wiped out. They probably have control over this system or this system, but it's probably about it and the pirates will take over soon. I have little doubt about that. Anyway, Matrix is ready for construction and it does need to create me an amount worthy of my might, which I admit is difficult, but it's not undoable, so I'll try to do my best. Also, I cannot do anything to raise this system's defense, uh, defensive capabilities, can I? No, I will not. I think I will have to accept the fact that I am going to lose it, so maybe I can at least defend contradict to an extent. Well, I can go for stealth construction, which is something, but I cannot really go for anything else, sadly. I can go for some extra dust afterwards, but that's about it. Oh well. Dear Matrix, you need to create me an army warrior of my might. How do you do so, however, is a good question indeed, because neither of my weapons are particularly amazing, and yeah, let's have a cool, let's think about this. So electrics, they are tanks who have some offensive capabilities, however, if I were to equip destroyers with pinch guns, would they actually be able to carry more of them than the electrics? Yes, they would. They would all die after a single battle, but they would be able to carry more weapons. So do I want to go for grass cannons, or do I actually want to go for something that can survive the assault and live to fight another day? It is a very interesting question indeed that I kinda do want to answer. It is in fact fairly important that I answer it. Hey, actually, I actually have more tonnage, how did this happen? Maybe I gained some kind of upgrade, that's good, so in- uh, hey, get back here! I didn't mean to click right mouse button, I wanted to click the left one and threaten pinch guns as much as I would get on a destroyer, so they would be have just as much of a firepower as destroyers, but they would also be fairly difficult to take down. Which is good by all means, and I'm just now trying to decide if I want to use missiles or lasers. Now missiles would be more effective. There's no doubt of, of that, about that. They cost less tonnage, way less tonnage in fact. By, uh, by which I mean one, but it's still less by quite a decent amount. They all cost less industry, They and they are more, you know, reliable damage sources. They also are most effective in the long grade phase, which is when the battle is pretty much always resulted. So, missiles are better than being sadly. Missiles are not overpowered, but I hate them. You know that I hate missiles. 
and just because of that, I will go for pinch gas. I may ignore my role playing rules and whatnot, but there are some things that, that will just never change, like war. <laughs> or like just my. Or just like. I got, I got lost in thought, I'm sorry. I was trying to say that I love beams more than missiles and I will use beams because of that. Thank you very much. So. Anyway, electrics. How many of them can I make? No idea, but a lot. So I just queue up as many as I can get in a single turn and then I'll just cancel the other ones. As simple as it, there's no need to think about it at all. Tortuga could create a ship, but this would make it not produce enough dust for me, and I do need this dust. I really, really do. Anyway, I think I can end my turn now. Actually, no, I almost forgot. I also need to save Rendezvous. Now, Pyrus decided to engage, that was to be expected, but I can engage with Mario and hopefully I will be able to take down the enemy ships. But it does depend on my captain's intelligence. Now, keep in mind, this is not this harmony expansion yet. So my ships are extraordinarily dumb and dull, and they do not know what to do and how to do it well. So they will focus on whatever ship they, they will like focusing on, and they will be pretty bad at doing so as well. Well, in expansion, I'll actually have a choice or, you know, the ability to f decide on uh, how I want to use my ships, how I want to spread my fire, if I want to spread it at home, or maybe focus fire on one ship, or maybe on two or three, or you know how it goes. Actually, you cannot focus fire on two, but you can focus on fire on three. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is, in this kind of version of the game, I cannot really do much to make my ships better in this particular combat, but, I w but they were indeed enough to take out both the enemy ships. My guess is that the rocket distribution was right, they did not focus all their missiles on this pirate ship and this allowed them to take out both of the enemy sh cra uh, cravers? Both of the enemy yeah, warbirds, whatever. And now run the run is safe once more. Which makes me go, oh yeah. Anyway, let's end the turn. How long is this video cast? It's not even half an hour long, however, I do need to make it as quick as possible. I need to... Since I already went through the trouble of making it today when I am supposed to be sleeping, I might as well do my best to actually upload it before I hop into the plane, which is, which will be relatively soon, as you might guess. So hey, I did tell you to... Okay, they are getting the system. So what I'm trying to say is, I would need to do my best to actually upload this video before, it, uh, before I leave my home, so that you can actually watch it at some point in time. So this will be a short video cast, but then again, you probably got used to it uh, already since the last few videos were short anyway, because of the reasons I explained, I needed to make as many videos as possible, and I now have 12 electrics on my home system, <laughs> and I will lose like a ton of dust because of this, but you know what, I don't care, I'm just happy because of that. Now, my scout ship is an assault on Kravis system, how good is this Kravis system? It's more not entirely depleted, but it is, it is getting there. So poor cravers, they are eating themselves, and they're using good systems and making them not really, really worthless, but pretty bad. For example, this system, absolutely amazing. Six planet system, two arids, two levels, a desert, and a tan with end of rings, ancient artifacts, mutated flora, geothermic art activity, even more ancient artifacts, titanium and hyperion, and probably some more strategic resources that will be later discovered. Also three moons. Yeah! Large, medium, large, hey, get back here, I was talking. Large, large, medium, large, medium, small. It is an incredibly powerful system and it feels such, like a waste to give it to the Kravis who just, you know, ruined it by eating the planets. Sadly, there isn't much we can do about it. Now, can you run away in time? That's a good question. What kind of ships are the enemy using? Missile ships, so I will have no problems running away. And also, I can see that the enemy is even less technologically advanced than I am, which makes me giggle a little bit and smile faintly. Now then, let's have a fun. Let's have a little bit of fun with the pirates before I finish this cast. And I'm not sure if I will indeed bother to have another fight with the Amoebas because, as I said, I do need to go to sleep and I still need to schedule the upload of this video today, so I'm running on a rather tight time schedule, as you might imagine. Anyway, emergency shelter, obviously, because I need it desperately, and hey, get back here. And I'm pretty sure I can kill all of the enemy ships within a single turn, even though my magnetic sandpoint odds are very, very old. Alright, let's have a quick wait, and oh no! Well, this is gonna end poorly. I hope that my friends have enough HP to actually survive this cannonade, but... 
Yeah, the pirates were actually smart. They killed all my magnetics in like one shot. Well, now they're already all dead. My framos are taking a pounding. And I can just hope that... Alright, the pirates have been destroyed. All of them? Not quite. One little pirate remains, annoyingly enough. But it's not a problem anymore. Those famos can... St even though they are worse tanks than electrics, they are still really good tanks. And they are universal tanks too. Unlike the electrics. So... Yeah, as you can clearly see, they were easily able to stand their ground and actually survive this. Though I did have a little bit of a heart attack when the enemy countered my emergency shatter. Anyway, then, I think that is good enough for uh, today. It was Spawn Trust of the Mighty Mix Spawner. If you somehow managed to enjoy my cast, then please, by all means, like it, maybe even subscribe to my channel if you wish to see more. Also, please do leave a comment, I cannot read it at the, this point in time, since I am still in Korea when you are watching this video, but I will read it as soon as I can, and I do like reading them, they also help me a great deal. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you online.